Colors, 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 colors. <clears throat> if I asked you to take this very bare bones card layout design, and I asked you to make me a bunch of color schemes, such as monochromatic color scheme, I want complementary color schemes. <clears throat> I want you to work in triadic color schemes and analogous color schemes. Would you be able to do that? Well, if you keep on watching this video to the end, you will be able to do that. So I'm gonna show you all of your color options when it comes to creating awesome looking UIs. Let's get started. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. Okay, so the first example that we have here is gonna be monochromatic. And that means we are sticking just with either white and black or one color. And you'll see what I mean by that in a second. So most of us, when we think of monochromatic color schemes, we're thinking of white and black, black and white, or something like that, like this. Now, of course, we do have this one little addition of the green okay status, which I would still do just because that's a UX thing. Um, but this is one approach that you could take for this type of layout. Now, of course, we can also turn this into dark mode as well, and it works just as fine. Um, when it comes to monochromatic color schemes, you're gonna see it's just maximum contrast against all of your UI elements. So to show you a side-by-side, -side, still works, light dark mode, very simple to utilize a monochromatic color scheme in this fashion. Now, let's say for instance, we also wanted to say it, we have a monochromatic color scheme, but we're allowing ourselves to use different shades of lightness and darkness. You can do that with just black and white, and you could also do that with color, which you'll see in a second. So here's how we could do it in the context of just black and white, but allowing ourselves to use shades like grays in between. Here's what I would do with this type of design. As you can see, not much of a difference. Um, if I go back, this is our fully just black, white, and monochromatic, only two color values. And then now we can see I made the background dark, uh, slightly darker than what it was instead of just being pure white. And then these elements here, you can see are just pure white, these, these little cards inside. So if I show you a side-by-side -side, uh, comparison, this is also showing you how you can do that same concept, of course, with uh, the dark mode as well. So here's a side-by-side -side compar comparison of the very first design where it's just black and white. And then here's where we're allowing ourselves to, to use actual shades in between. And here's also a side-by-side -side of just the pure black and white dark mode with also uh, shades in between as well. I personally like this type of aesthetic. You'll see this aesthetic kind of a placed on, you know, apps like Discord, for, for instance. Um, this here, it has its use case. It depends on the project. So if you have a project that just wants to be just black and white and that's it, this is a great approach. So it really depends on the context. So going back here, we can also apply the same concept to colors. So this is still a monochromatic color scheme because we're only dealing with one shade of color, one color, sorry, that was wrong. We're only dealing with one hue essentially. And what we're doing is we could see these little cards, we just took, I did not change the color, all I did is just increase the lightness value slightly, and that's it. And this is a great approach as well if you want to, you know, not have just a black and white monochromatic scheme, but instead have a monochromatic scheme that's based on a color. So this is also um, a few variations that'll show you that this works with essentially any color. Okay, so now let's talk about what are called analogous color schemes. So analogous color schemes, you could see, we actually have the icons. This is the only thing I changed. And I changed it to t another color adjacent to the background color in which they're sitting on. So. For instance, what I mean by analogous is if you look at the color slider here or a color wheel, these come in different fashions. Um, you see the background is more of this blue, but then these icons are right over here in this section. And that is analogous. It just means adjacent next to. And typically you can't go wrong with that. It's easy to make colors work well when they're adjacent to each other. Now, of course there could be exceptions. Uh, you just don't want to have bad color contrast. And so I'll show you uh, the side-by-side -side comparison where it was just white here with a white icons versus this. Now you can see this has more contrast overall because the icons are, 
white, fully maximum contrast based on the background color that we have here. And so again, subjective preferences to a degree. And you can see that this also works, this analogous color scheme idea, this works well with the other colors as well. We could see um, orange, yellow is right next to orange in the color wheel, so it works. Right here we have pink and like this purple, this works as well too, so very good stuff. Let's talk about, also just wanted to show you, this is still analogous, but I just wanted to show you, you have options in terms of where you place these colors. Um, this color for this background panel, it's really emphasizing this 42 active users. You can think of this as kind of establishing visual hierarchy through color. Your eye is drawn to this chord way more just because it contrasts way more. Um, and it is, this is the same color as this over here. So I just wanted to let you know that you have options. You don't only have to change icons or something like that. Um, now let's talk about another type of color scheme. And this is this here, we would not consider this analogous. This would be complementary, all right? So this is another type of co uh, color scheme that I'm demonstrating here. So on the color wheel, yellow and this blue aren't next to each other, but they work well. They're complementary. Okay, so my, 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 I guess my suggestion would be to experiment with trying to find complementary colors. They're not next to each other, but they work well with each other. And of course, there's tools that can help you find complementary colors and all these type of uh, color schemes I'm talking about. Um, just to show you as well, you can also, this is the same color except it's just toned, meaning we added some gray and we, we made it lighter. This will work just as well as a complementary color scheme. So you don't have to stick with the full brightness of a color. Um, you, can, you can adjust the value in the tone, tones adding grays, um, and it will still work. So you have many options. Here's more examples of complementary color schemes. Um, for instance, uh, here's a, a pretty crazy example where we have the background color um, being like this bluish color with this yellow on top. They complement each other well. And they, there's a good color contrast there. And then over here, these icons are actually dark blue, which works well with this brighter orange color. All right, so now let's go ahead and let's talk about complementary colors. So this is where we get this. Does this immediately remind you of Google? Well, these are complementary, compl not complementary, tridactic colors. I'm sorry. It's a triads. A triad means three, so three colors. And of course, you could find triad color pickers, and they're not adjacent to each other. Um, they're they're three different colors. They're not analogous. Um, and I'll show you some examples as well. So these would be triadic or triadic uh, color schemes right here. Just working with all different colors that just complement each other well and they work well with each other. If I push these all right up against each other, they would all have good color contrast. And that's exact, That's essentially what you want. We also have, um, this works with a, a dark background as well, as you can see. Um, and finally, I'm gonna talk a little bit about gradients. So this is kind of one of our original examples. This is a, a uh, monochromatic color scheme where, in which we're allowing ourselves to add grays. So how would I add a gradient on this, on this type of aesthetic? Well, when it comes to gradients and gradients, you know, they're kind of coming back in popularity. You do not want to overdo it with the gradients. So here's how I would uh, tackle, you know, this is one potential approach I would use to kind of gradient ties this layout right here. And, and you can see if we look up here, it's very light and it's diagonal. So I made the gradient diagonal and it gets darker. There's also a very subtle, large soft back uh, drop shadow as well. And if you want this type of aesthetic, perfectly fine. You can also experiment with it. So I decided to remove the background colors and add a stroke on the panels on side. So many options and it looks great. You can do the same thing, of course, with color. So here's an example. So this is, Kind of reminds me of uh, one of the Microsoft Windows, um, maybe XP back in the day. Um, this is another example. And what's cool about this example is this gradient in the background, the card background, starts with this blue up here and then it gets into like teal. So it's an analogous, I, yeah, an analogous gradient essentially. 
So you can mix colors in your gradients, but you don't want to go too far. Typically, it always it will just wreck it and it'll be too busy in terms of color. This here works though. So again, just to show you another subtle example, maybe working in gradients. Again, I, I when it comes to gradients, you have to be so careful. You want it to be more subtle than you know crazy colors that are just clashing with each other. Uh, for this, all I did was just take these same colors. I used a radial gradient and made it big and like kind of push it to the, to the right and just made it slightly lighter and that's it. That's all you have to do with this sort of thing. And that is essentially it. Uh, I'm going to go through these all the rest as a quick recap and just to show you they have so many options. So here we have monochromatic and dark mode. We also have monochromatic allowing ourselves to use different values in dark mode as well. We also have analogous color schemes, or this wasn't analogous, I'm sorry. This is still uh, monochromatic except with just one color. Then we have our analogous color schemes. Very awesome. And then we also have our complementary colors with different shades. So you can create pastel colors like this just by introducing a little bit of tone, AKA grays and adjusting the lightness and darkness values. And then here's more examples of those complementary colors. And then finally we have our triads in dark mode. And finally our gradients. So as you can see, we've taken this design uh, this single layout and you can see how many layout options we truly have and that's what makes it exciting but you have to make sure your your if you have type and you have icons that your that contrast well the readability the WCAG the web content accessibility guidelines has a contrast section and it's basically it, it, it allows you to determine if your your topography is uh, contrasting well based on the background color it's sending on, based on the color itself of the type, and also the size. Um, use the con there's a uh, a plugin called the Stark Contrast plugin, and it's available for uh, Figma and I think a few other design tools, and it will let you know if your type contrasts well enough automatically. That's the one big concern. So you want to make sure you have good color contrast all around, and also good type top topography based contrast as well. All right, awesome stuff. If you enjoyed that, make sure to subscribe up, check out designcourse.com, and I'll see you real soon. Goodbye.